Hi, today we are going to be looking at factoring polynomials and methods that we can use to essentially factor any degree of polynomial. So first thing we'll talk about is our remainder theorem, which will be essential for factoring polynomials. So when a polynomial represented by P of X is divided by a binomial of the form x minus a, the remainder is equal to p of a. So in other words, we replace all of our x values with the value of a, and that, when we calculate it, gives us our remainder. So we can get a remainder without actually doing division. So for example, determine remainder when 2x to the power 4 minus 5x cubed minus 5x squared plus 5x plus 3 is divided by x minus 3 and by x plus 2. So for the first one, when we have x minus 3, technically our a value is positive 3. So we'll just rewrite the, our equation here. So we've got 2x to the power 4 minus 5x cubed minus 5x squared plus 5x plus 3. Now, we are going to substitute our a value in to get our remainder. So we have So we have two times three to the power of four minus five times three cubed, minus five times three squared, plus five times three, plus three. Okay, so three to the power of four is 81. So we've got two times 81, minus five times 27, minus five times nine, plus 15, plus three. So two times 81 is 162 minus five times 27, which is negative 135 minus 45 plus 15 plus three. Combining all of these, we end up with zero. So our remainder for this one, if we divide it by x minus three would be zero. We'll do the same thing here, but with x plus two. So if we have x plus two, that means our a value is negative two. So if we have our function, which is essentially our polynomial function x is equal to 2x to the power of 4 minus 5x cubed minus 5x squared plus 5x plus 3. We'll substitute in our negative 2. So we've got p of negative 2 is equal to 2 times negative 2 to the power of 4 minus 5 times negative 2 cubed minus 5 times negative 2 squared plus five times negative two plus three. So going through and simplifying this, negative two to the power of four is 16. So we've got two times 16 minus five times negative eight minus five times four minus 10 plus three. Going through and simplifying this further, so we have 32 plus 40 minus 20 minus 10 plus 3. So 32 plus 40 is 72. Minus 20 would be 52, minus 
10 is 42 plus 3 is 45. So if we divide by x plus 2, our remainder would be 45. Okay, so next we are looking at what's known as our factor theorem, which states that x minus a is a factor of a polynomial px if p of a is equal to zero. So in other words, if we look back at these two, this one, we had a remainder, it was not zero, so this is not a factor. This one, we had a remainder which was zero, so x minus three is one of the factors of this. Now, because this is x to the power of four, it can have up to four factors. So this is one of them. So once again, x minus a is a factor for polynomial p of x if p of a gives us zero. So which binomials are factors of x cubed minus 6x squared plus 5x plus 12? So because this is x cubed, we can expect that it could have up to three factors. They won't necessarily have three factors, but can have up to three factors. So if this first one, our a value would be negative one. So we'll rewrite our equation down here. So we have our polynomial is x cubed minus 6x squared plus 5x plus 12. We're going to substitute negative 1 in. So we have negative 1 cubed minus 6 times negative 1 squared plus 5 times negative 1 plus 12. So negative one cubed is negative one. Negative one squared is one times negative six gives us negative six. Five times negative one would be negative five plus 12. Calculating that we have P negative one is equal to zero. So we can say X plus one is a factor. Next, we will look at our x minus 3. So this one has an a value of positive 3. So if we have p of x is equal to x cubed minus 6x squared plus 5x plus 12, we'll substitute in 3. So we have p of 3 is equal to 3 cubed minus 6 times 3 squared plus 5 times 3 plus 12. So we'll go through and simplify this. So 3 cubed is 27. Then we have 3 squared is 9. Nine times negative six would be negative 54. Five times three is 15. And then we've got plus 12. So 27 minus 54 is negative 27. Plus 15 is negative 12 plus 12 is zero. So we can say that X minus three is a factor. The next one we have is this one here. Our a value would be negative four. So once again, start with our polynomial. P of x is equal to x cubed minus six x squared plus five x plus 12. And we will substitute in our negative four. So we have negative four cubed minus six times negative four squared plus five times negative four plus 12. 
So P of negative four is equal to negative four cubed is negative 64. Negative four squared is 16 times negative six is negative 96. Five times negative four is negative 20. And then we have plus 12. Now calculating this gives us negative 168. So it is not a factor. Okay, so we have one left. So with D, technically our A value would be positive four. So we have polynomial X equals X cubed minus six X squared plus five X plus 12. We're going to substitute in positive four for our X value. So we have four cubed minus six times four squared plus five times four plus 12. So we have P of four is equal to four cubed, which is 64 minus four squared is 16 times negative six is negative 96. Then we have five times four is 20 plus 12. Now adding these together, we get zero. So therefore X minus four is a factor. Now, because it was X cubed and we found three factors, essentially, if we were to multiply X plus one times X minus three times X minus four together, we would get this original function. So next we'll look at essentially when we go to factor, how we should choose which binomials we should attempt to see if we can get zero for a remainder so then we know how to factor. So we have what's known as a factor property. So if x minus a is a factor of a polynomial, then a is a factor of a constant term in the polynomial. So what you'll notice is this one we just did our factors of 12 would be plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three, plus or minus four. So all the ones that worked were listed in the factors of this 12. So once again, if X minus A is a factor of a polynomial, then A is a factor of a constant term of our polynomial. Okay, so we are on a fully factor 3x cubed minus 4x squared minus 5x plus 2. So first thing we're going to do is list the factors of our constant term. So in this case, there's not many. So it'd just be plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2. Now we're going to utilize those to check for remainders. So you can choose to start whichever ones you want first. I tend to start with lower numbers that way one cubing, or if we have a higher exponent, I'm not dealing with very large numbers, trying to figure out if remainder is zero. So first one I'm going to try is an A value of one. So we have P of X is equal to three X cubed minus four X squared minus five X plus two. So I'll substitute one in. So I've got P of one equals three times one cubed minus four times one squared minus five times one plus two. So that gives us P of one is equal to one cubed is one times three is three. One squared is one times negative four is negative four. Negative five times one is negative five. 
add two. And that gives us negative four. So that one's not a factor. So I'll try another a value. So I'll try a is negative one. So we have p of x is equal to three x cubed minus four x squared minus five x plus two. We'll substitute in our negative one. So we've got p of negative one equals three times negative one cubed minus four times negative one squared minus five times negative one plus two. So that gives us p of negative one is equal to negative one cubed is negative one times three is negative three. Negative one squared is one times negative four is negative four. Negative five times negative one would be positive five and then plus two. So this will give us negative seven plus essentially seven. So add zero. So we can say X plus one is a factor. Now it's X plus one because once again, our factors take the form of X minus A. So we, if we have X minus negative one, that works out to positive one. So we have now done steps one and two. We have now found a factor. So we're going to divide our original polynomial by it. Now for this, we can choose to use long or synthetic division. I tend to use synthetic because it's quicker. Okay, so if I'm doing synthetic division, I'm taking my coefficient. So I've got three, negative four, negative five, and two. Our a values out here at negative one, we bring down our first term. So that's three times negative one gives us negative three. Adding these gives us negative seven. Negative one times negative seven is positive seven. Adding these gives us two times negative one gives us negative two. And that gives us a remainder of zero. Now we should expect this to be zero if we got the zero here. Now that means there's no remainder, which means we have three X squared minus seven X plus two. Now, if this was anything larger than a two, I would just repeat this process again. So I'd look at the factors of this. I would plug them in. And see which ones gave me zero. Now, if one didn't work before, it's still not going to work. And essentially, I would continue that process till we get down to a quadratic. Once we are at a quadratic, we can use product sum factoring from grade 11. So with this one, we have a product of 3 times 2, so 6, with a sum of negative 7. So start each bracket with 3x. Two things that multiply to six, add to negative seven would be negative six, negative one. We have an extra factor of three. We have to divide out of one of these. So this becomes X minus two times three X minus one. Next, we need to add in our factor that we found above. So we have X plus one times X minus two times three X minus one. And that would be our equation fully factored. Okay, so we will do another example. So we have two X cubed minus nine X squared plus seven X plus six. So if we look at our factors of six, that's going to be plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three, and plus or minus six. So I would probably start with an A value of one. So we have two X cubed minus nine X squared plus seven X plus six, we'll substitute our one in.
Okay, so we have essentially one cube times two is two. One squared is one times negative nine is negative nine. Seven times one is positive seven. And then we have plus six. So two minus nine is seven, or sorry, negative seven plus seven is zero plus six gives me six. So that is not a factor. So we'll try an A value of negative one next. So we have our polynomial is 2x cubed minus 9x squared plus 7x plus 6. So we have p of negative 1 equals 2 times negative 1 cubed minus 9 times negative 1 squared plus 7 times negative 1 plus 6. Okay, so negative one cubed is negative one times two is negative two. Negative one squared is one times negative nine is negative nine. Seven times negative one would be negative seven. And then we have plus six. So negative two minus nine is negative 11. Minus seven is negative 18 plus six is negative 12. So this one also is not a factor. Next one we will try is a is equal to two. So once again, polynomial is two x cubed minus nine x squared plus seven x plus six. So we'll insert two in, so we have two times two cubed minus nine times two squared plus seven times two plus six. Okay, so two cubed is eight times two is 16. Then two squared is four times negative nine would be negative 36. Then seven times two is 14 plus six. So we have one that equals zero. So we know X minus two is a factor. So now I'll do synthetic division. So we had two, negative nine, seven, six, and we had an A value of two. So we bring down this first term. So we've got two times two is four. Add these, that gives us negative five times two is negative 10. Add these, that gives us negative three. Multiply by two, that gives us negative six. Adding these is zero as expected. So this is 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. Because this is x squared, we can use the greater of and product some factoring. So we've got product is 2 times negative 3 is negative 6 with a sum of negative 5. Start each of our brackets with the 2x. Two things that multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 5 would be negative 6 and positive 1. We'll divide that extra factor of two out of this one. So that gives us x minus three times two x plus one. And then we will also bring up this factor. So we also have x minus two. So this is fully factored.